All right, thank you for joining me for part three of why we should believe in Jesus. So let's continue. Um, as we had mentioned before, we gain hope through believing in Jesus because we have the hope of uh, resurrection into an eternal life, life after death, and a reward that's waiting for us in the kingdom of God that will outshine all of the bad that's happened in this world. Um, so yes, you you gain hope in, a, in this world where you know you're immersed with doubt and misfortune and stress everywhere you turn and darkness and hopelessness and cruelty and unjustness you have a savior jesus is your savior and in in a world that seems vain um in a world that's vanishing perishing you have a purpose in life and that's the other thing a lot of people seek is not just hope but a purpose what's the meaning behind it what's the purpose of life what's the purpose of my life you know even though you may have nothing you'll have everything you'll ever need in Jesus um, so the promise of Jesus's return and resurrection and the hope of eternal life and seeing you know you'll you'll be completely in peace, completely happy, completely and purely healthy and whole. And then you'll be with your loved ones that believe in Christ as well for eternity in love and happiness together. That's amazing. I mean, there's nothing else that provides that. <sighs> that peace and that everlasting joy and light. Um, so... Let's read Revelations 21.4 so we can further understand how precious and peaceful and happy a life in God's kingdom and our afterlife will be when we believe in Jesus. So it's Revelations 21.4. It says, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. No more crying. Can you imagine that? I mean, there were days that, there were days where not one day went by that I didn't, I was just not crying. Because this world is so full of sorrow. It's hard to believe that you would never feel that again. Um... No more death, no more grief, no more pain. Who can provide that? Another good verse to read is First Thessalonians four sixteen through seventeen. And as I mentioned before, um, you find a family in Christ. So your family, like Jesus said, is those your brothers and sisters in Christ, those who believe in God and do His will. So um, you know you have people. You're not alone in this world. Of course, you have the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives you, but you have people that are with you that you can turn to for the truth, for, for guidance and help, and who will, who will be able to lend you a hand and uplift you when other people are trying to tear you down and when you yourself don't even believe, you know, when you, when you, believe, when you lose belief in yourself, they'll be there to remind you of God's love. And um, these are true friends, so I'm sure, you know, many of y'all have heard, you know, I'd rather have one true friend than a million fake friends. So true friendship, it's like true love. I mean, there's, it's irreplaceable, and you get that when you come to Jesus because he provides you with that. Um, we can go ahead and read Mark 10, 28 through 30, because he actually, Jesus actually talks about this. <clears throat> so 28 when Peter um, sorry then Peter began to say to him see we have left all and followed you and Jesus answered said assuredly I say to you there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time 
houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with perse with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last and the last first so you don't have to worry about losing those you know cuz as we walk into a christian life you know with god we are going to have to lose association with um people that are not healthy for our spiritual walk with god but you don't have to worry about losing those things because god jesus will provide a hundredfold so i mean that's uncomparable um so the other reason that we should believe in Jesus is actually because of who Jesus is himself. So you gain not just God, like you gain not just a God, like a belief or a deity, because that's what people, you know, in religion, that's what people worship is their deity. Well, God is not just a deity, okay? And when you come to learn about who he is and you actually feel him in your relationship with him in, in your life, you come to find this out. He's so much more. Jesus called us friends. That means Jesus is a friend. A friend. And what did we just, you know, finish talking about friends, you know? They're always there to help you to comfort you and, and uplift you when you're down and and guide you. You have that in Jesus. You have a father in God. A father who truly loves you. You know, and those of us who have fathers and have good relationships with fathers, with our father, our human father, you know, what does that mean to you? You have this strong person that you look up to and that you just feel, you know, <laughs> happy and, and comforted in their presence. But you know what? For those that don't have fathers or parents even, the Bible says that when our parents turn away, God will be our parent. God will be our father. One that will never leave you like old friends or old, you know, or your parents or corrupt, you know, leaders and people that you look up to, he doesn't turn corrupt. He doesn't turn. He doesn't change. God never changes. He doesn't turn against you. He will always provide you true and everlasting love. And instead of judging you or not understanding you as other humans do, um, he doesn't do that. I mean, yeah, he is our judge, but through Jesus, we are no longer condemned. We have salvation. So he gives you that hope and that peace and eternal happiness, you know. And you don't have to worry about... See, this was actually um, a struggle of mine when I first started live, living for God because I kept looking at him in a human way instead of who he is as God and as Jesus as my friend as my father and savior I kept looking at him like oh I'm a bad person I'm I'm weird and that's how people miss uh, what is that that's how people perceive me I was misunderstood I was rejected and not wanted and it just felt weird and so I always felt like I had to hide myself conceal myself from God because especially since God's holy you know but no that's not God needs you to be open with him so he can work in your life so he can show you love you know like I said God doesn't impede on people's lives okay he'll only come to you if you allow him to and he doesn't he knows everything about you before you even born and the Bible talks about that so you don't have to be embarrassed or ashamed of being close to him nothing separates you from the love of God so let's go ahead and read Psalm 68 there's two verses I want to read to you 
because it's so beautiful. So Psalm 68. And that's going to be verse 5 and 6. A father of the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. Let the rebellious dwell in a dry land. You see how good he is? To those who are unwanted in this world, rejected, lowly, looked on, looked on you know, as in a low manner, outcasted. He takes care of you and loves you. And let's read John 3, 17 through 19. So John 3, 17 through 19 says... For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So, you know, again we see here that Jesus is here to save us. He's here to save us. And people, you know, they, we, as imperfect people, we love, like I said, we, we love what is bad and, you know, all this stuff. So we reject what's good and what's of the light. Um, but but you will always have a good righteous friend father love forever in Jesus so that is an, another reason why we want to believe in Jesus um, as our Lord and Savior all right thank you again for joining me and if you want to go ahead and we'll finish with part four thank you